Hi, welcome back to the Lee Kempner House. I'm Janie and I am here by myself today. It's great when we have volunteers and do tours and things, but sometimes I just need to focus and really get some stuff done. And this is going to be a busy week. I think I'll be here seven days in a row. We are trying desperately to get ready for our first big fundraising event of the year, Steampunk Festival that's coming up and we need those flushing toilets so bad but we also have this window project going on and some other things that have been happening around the house that were a little unexpected so my goal today is to try to finish up these windows and solve that problem with the slab that was done incorrectly with the slope at the toilet down there. So let me just show you real quick what's going on with these windows and what my work plan is for today. I'm already a couple of hours behind schedule. There was a huge wreck on the freeway driving down that I got stuck in. So I am under the gun. So let's get moving. This is one of the three big sashes and they're the lower sash. This one, I've already got the old glazing out. We've already put a first pass at repair on that chiseled out wood. But as I was scraping this, I noticed the wood is much softer. It's not spongy, it's not rotted, but it is definitely spongier than all the other sashes. So I am contemplating putting that Abitron liquid wood on there to restore the structural strength before I prime these. While they're stripped down, it's the time to do it. It'll also act as a binder here where the glazing goes. Although I'm out of glazing putty, I had to order some more. So I can't finish this window and I can't move it because that glass is not secure. But I do need to finish all these other sashes and get all of of the finished sanding done, another coat of primer, another sand, and get them painted. Heather went to Benjamin Moore and got her favorite paint, which is this exterior low luster. She says, and she's a professional at this, she's taken all kinds of classes, she does decorative painting. Um, it's, it is a water-based kind of acrylic paint, but it's almost like a coating instead of a paint and it's supposed to have really superior exterior staying power and these windows are on the west sun she's picked out a color for us just a soft white but i need to get all of that done i need to get this window repaired i'm going to take it downstairs and put it on another work surface and get to gluing on that and then i need to prime and sand the rest of these frame. So this is one of the problems with tours. There's not a lot of place to work. I think I can manhandle these sashes and get them spread out and paint them vertically now that they're repaired. The other reason they're ready to paint now is our glazing has skimmed over and hardened enough that it can be painted. And you need to paint the glazing. It helps prevent that oxidation that we talked about so that it lasts longer. So I need to get all of these painted, cleaned up, and possibly flipped over and do a little work on the interior side. So that is going to be my focus this morning because that Abitron will take a while to dry. It's cool and humid this morning, which is not good for it curing. So I want to go ahead and get that on first. Sitting in traffic, I had a long time to think about the order of doing things. Like I said, this will take the longest to dry because of the weather down here today. Okay, I do want to show you this. I worried last time I mixed it up with a plastic spoon and it turned kind of a, a blackish color. And I worried that it was melting my black plastic spoon, but it's doing the same thing just with the wooden stick. So that's probably just the chemical reaction between the two parts. Okay, I've been stirring for about five minutes. This should be thoroughly mixed up. And I think I showed you all this before. Um, I buy these brushes. They're three for a dollar at the 99 cent store and I can just throw them away when I'm done. Now my dad was a house painter and he meticulously cleaned his brushes and used them 
for years, but with something like this, that um, it's an epoxy, it's going to harden. This is not something where you could even clean and reuse a brush. So it makes it a very inexpensive, go away brush, and they're actually pretty decent quality. I use them a lot. But this is that hardener, and it just gets brushed on, and you can see it absorbing into the wood. And it's actually adding structural integrity. So this is not just a coating. It's going to soak in, bond with the wood, and cure because it's a two-part epoxy and make these really strong and water resistant. So these windows hopefully will last another 130 years and that would make them 260 years old. So doing a little bit of extra work now will just give us that extra longevity. So I'm going to just paint that in and again, it's it's good. Well, no, I think I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna paint it in here too. I think the glazing compound will bind to it, but I'll also come back and prime it. So I'm gonna get it in every little nook and cranny that I can on the wood, especially if water seeps back behind the glazing as the glazing gets old and cracked. This is an area where damage could be done to the frames. So while I have it out, it won't hurt to put a little bit in there. So I'm going to keep doing that and just coat the entire exterior of this window. Okay, I've got all that done. I've got the hardware off this guy and I'm going to actually take it down in the basement and put it on a different work table so I can reach this easily. All right, I've got my window down there. Now I'm going to collect up my tools. I did remember to bring from home the glue, a bunch of clamps. Okay, I think I have collected everything I need down here. And as you can see, I've got this clamped to a work table and it's rolling around. I need to lock the wheels, but this is a cool little table that my husband takes good care of me. He found two of these on the side of the road and he grabbed them for me to use those work tables down here because we really didn't have anything other than the one set of sawhorses. And he's actually uh, kept one that he's been using because you can't see it in the video, but it has adjustable legs, so it can raise up pretty high. And he has a very bad back. And so one thing that's hard on him is leaning over to work. He needs to stand very upright. So he's been using it on a house he's been working on. So he's keeping it for a while. But by clamping this down, I can scrape. I didn't have to do that upstairs because the glass was still in them and they were had contact on all sides and the glass is real heavy and kind of held them in place but without the glass this is super light it's also the small one so i'm just going to take all my various scrapers and go around and clean and scrape and sand everything on both sides since the glass is out i might as well do the interior and the exterior and get this one in good shape all the way around. So I've already done a little bit of it upstairs. Um, this rabbit edge is pretty clean, but this is that part that's loose. I don't want to take it off because of the way it's put in here in the corners. I'm afraid I'll break it. And the others, as, as I talked about, are one piece. This is a little unusual that it was made in two pieces. I don't know if it's a repair, but I need it to be clean in there to glue. So what I'm going to do is just take my rough sandpaper and put down and just sand back and forth with my blade. Oops, my table is rolling a little bit. And clean, clean that up real good. I'm going to flip my sandpaper around and do it the other way. And before I glue, I need to remember to put my drop cloth down because this floor in here is our, I mean, the chauffeur's quarters, and we're just going to stain the concrete. So I don't want to drip any glue on it. So it'll be kind of messy to get glue in there. I'll have a glue brush, squeeze it all tight, put the clamps on it, and get that done. But it will ooze out and go everywhere.
I'm going to slow this down a little bit and try to show you something up close. But this is a very detailed edge here. I can't use a flat scraper, but my flat scraper does have just a slightly rounded corner to it. It's not sharp. So I am able to get in each groove and kind of pull along and do a pretty good job of getting that paint out. I thought that was going to be very difficult to do, but sometimes it's just about finding the right tool and you just have to play around. So there's one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four step downs in this trim. So this will be a little tedious, but I think it will pop off. I'm just careful and don't gouge that groove. just about to give up on this but sometimes you need a little change of leverage so I found that by standing it up I could come down the groove this way it's a little awkward it's just enough Get that last little bit of paint out. I've come this far. Okay, so I did come up with a problem. I don't know if you can see this, but this corner is too loose. It's going to have to come apart. And it's the same repair that McNatt did. There's some wedges in here. I'll have to pull out, clean this up, glue and clamp, put a little bit bigger wedge back in to tighten it up. These windows were made that they could be disassembled and repaired or one side or another replaced, but that's too loose to let that go. And of course, I don't have a clamp with me long enough to clamp that so I will either have to wait a couple of days I'm going to spend the night tonight so I'm not going home tonight so I can't get another clamp or maybe I can run down to McNatt and they'll loan me one I'm sure they've got tons and tons I'll call them after lunch it'd be nice to get this glued and clamped and let it sit for a day okay then I'm gonna quit I'm gonna quit, clean up, and have some lunch. It's been about three hours working on this thing. Okay, I just found something I've never seen before. This happens all the time, but in the door is a button. And I've showed you before the alarm system in the window. Maybe this was part of the alarm system that it alarmed when somebody opened the door. Or possibly it's a switch for a light like in closets these days. But my guess is alarm system. Since we know they had them on the windows, they would have had something on the door. Interesting, there's not one over here, and that's because this door is the one that bolts into the threshold and doesn't open unless you're inside. So it kind of makes sense that they would only alarm the one that opens up. Sometimes when I'm filming stuff, I have no idea what y'all have already seen in a video or not. Um, but hopefully you saw our volunteer Walter explaining about how to hang the fire extinguishers and where. And if you saw that video, you know that we decided on this location because it's visible as you're exiting the house. So the goal is in a fire, everyone should move towards an exit. You would pick up the fire extinguisher on your way out. 
oops, and it's going to take me two screws. So I'm going to put this one right here on the wainscoting. I don't want it too high, but I don't want it too low either. If it were 40 pounds or more, there's some regulation. It has to be the bottom no more than three and a half feet off the ground, but this is much lighter weight than that. And the bracket does extend out. I tested it to see there's a little piece of trim here and I need the fire extinguisher to hang in this space. Whoops. So I'm putting it here. It's going to take two screws. I might be overkill like my husband. I might have been able to do it with a smaller screw, but better safe than sorry. Okay, so it's just a simple hook. It's got a little tab here that's going to hang on that and it fits right in between and it's very visible. So that's one down, seven to go. Okay, this one could be a little tricky. Oops. I need it to hang right about here. We'll have to find a place to store this somewhere else because we can't be pulling this in and out and hitting our fire extinguisher. So I'll need to move this. And this is plaster and it looks like it's had some kind of repair here. Although this looks like old plaster. I may end up having to go through and get some kind of uh, toggle anchor, but I have this guy. It's my rare earth magnet. And I bought it as a stud finder because you can't see through the plaster, but it's strong enough to find the nails in the studs. And it says it's sticking like right here. There's a stud. Should be a stud right there. So I'm going to try to put it. Oops. <laughs> right there and hope that that goes into a stud. So I have kind of a long nail, so I'm gonna give that a try. Not a nail, a screw. Oh my gosh, okay. It's sticking to everything. I can't get, oh gosh, get down, okay. So that was about right here. And that's about the perfect place to put it. First, can I get through the plaster without drilling? I think so. And second, will I hopefully hit a stud? Oh, I hit something. Yeah, I hit a stud. Okay, necessity is the mother of invention. I've got to move all these windows around so I can paint them vertically. And I've taking everything metal off of me so I won't bang into the glass. And I've come up with a method, they're too heavy. But if I put it on my foot, I can kind of walk with it. I think I can sand, prime, and paint the front side of it. I've saved all our fire extinguisher boxes to use as drop cloths. I think I have them a little too close to the wall. We're going to refinish the floor, but I still don't want to drip anything on it. Okay. And of course, my sandpaper and everything is downstairs, but this one's already been 
filled. I think it's sanded, but I'm going to get that fine sandpaper and give it a quick pass over. But I want to get everybody staged, so when I come in and paint, I can paint everything at once. I can go all the way down in the basement to get my sandpaper because I found up in our closet that Pat just organized a brand new foam sandy block, sandy block, sanding block, and it has a medium surface and a fine surface. And I actually like these real well for finished sanding. And these came from, I think I told y'all a long time ago, my husband's aunt was a woodworker and when she could no longer use her equipment, she donated it to the house and we ended up with a lot of kind of expendables like this. And when I added up the value of everything that she gave to us, it was probably a thousand dollars or more, things like sandpaper, brushes, um, all kinds of just woodworking stuff. So. Here's to you, Aunt Sarah, in your memory. I'm just going to give this a light going over. Okay, it is late in the day and I'm losing light and since I'm here by myself I have all the doors locked and the alarm on and I haven't opened the shutters and there's no light uh, bulb in this room so it's getting a little dim it's almost five but you, you notice I did put on my magnifying glasses because I am going to prime over the glazing like I think we talked about Remember, it cures, it doesn't dry, and it's an oxidation process. So we want to keep oxygen away from it. But this is my brand new can of Kills Exterior Interior Oil Base with a fungicide in it. And remember the climate down here, it is Mildew City. So I'm going to just get started with the hard part, and that's going down the glazing. And this is still one of my 99 cent store brushes, but it's a little angle brush and it's a little newer, so it's not as rough as the ones I save for dirty work. So I am able to very carefully cut in right on that glazing line. Now the one thing that oil-based paint will do with these nylon bristles if it's not something formulated specifically for oil-based paint, they will start getting soft and gunky. So sometimes they don't last that long, but they, they should last through this. And look how much nicer that's going on than that other junky primer I had, which I think was a kills, but I don't know what happens to things in the climate down here. Everything just gets so incredibly gross and yes I'm a cutter in or not a taper I think I told you my dad was a painter I've been painting since I could walk I know some people like to tape everything off I still have a steady enough hand that on most things if I take my time I can be very precise with the right brush and then once this dries, I will use that fine sanding again, go over it and come back with that Benjamin Moore paint that Heather picked out for us. And this is also a high stain blocking primer. Although I found oil-based primer does not always block stain. Sometimes if you've got something that's really, really in bad condition, the only thing that will stock of it stop it. <laughs> Can't talk. The only thing that will stop it is a shellac based primer. But there's no staining in this wood. There's no paint come through or a lot of knots or imperfections where the sap comes through. So I think this will be fine.
Okay, the painting's done upstairs. Last project down here. I'll try to do this quick, it's getting dark. I went and borrowed a clamp from McNatt. It's 48 inches, I measured 47. Whoops, on that slid in the car. Go all the way to the end to work. Oh yeah, more than enough. First, I've got my, uh, got a mess down here. I need a bigger table. I need the bigger everything. Everything in this house is big. I found my trusty rubber mallet. Whoop. I'm just gonna knock this apart. And this is what Ben was showing before, is this is just mortise and tenon. This is that piece that they glued on and it slides in here and then they put a wedge of wood in to hold it. I'm going to glue it. If I may glue all of this at once because that comes down. I can get the glue in there real well. Get this end glued. Um, let me get myself organized a little bit better and get that clamped. Okay, I think I have about five minutes left on my phone and filming and I wish I could practice this because I don't know if it's going to work. Um, that clamp is going to be heavy and if I put it on here, it's gonna flip this thing forward. So I do have one of my clamps holding the window down. Get my glue open, now where's my little brush? My little brush, I took sandpaper and the wire brush, I cleaned this very well. I'm gonna really hit it with the glue. I've doubled up my drop cloth underneath where this is going to go. I'm gonna get it on all the parts. Can't have too much glue. And since I'm doing it all at once, I'm also going to have to glue down this strip, which is going to just drip all over the floor. So I've doubled up my drop cloth. And I'm gonna use my brush and make sure I spread that real well and get it pretty heavy. It's not nearly heavy enough. I'm going to do it on both sides. I can clean up the glue later. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Remember Ben's Ben said you have to clamp it for it to have strength. Okay, I'm gonna get that lined up where it needs to be and put a series of clamps. I'm going to do them from the bottom because that big long clamp is going to come on top. I'm gonna get a couple in place to hold it. Make sure it's lined up properly. You can see when I squeeze tight, the glue comes out. You can see it's not clamped here. So see the gap that's in there? It's gotta have clamps all the way down. It won't have any strength. five inches, I guess. When I'm all done, I'll get a wet rag and come clean this up. The last one on here. Don't get the hand strength. Okay, 
And that's the easy part. Now the hard part is this end here. Let me grab my, what did I do with my rubber hammer? There it is. I'm gonna hold it and gently tap this back together. Get that as tight as I can. But you can see there's still a little gap there, so that's not tight enough. I've already got my great big clamp sized properly. I can set it on. I have to be careful. This window is at a curve. I really should have a little wedge of wood to make this straighter. But I think it'll work. I'm just going to gently tighten that until I see everything come together. I don't have huge physical strength, so I'm not over tightening. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. Close up my glue and show y'all the finished result. Look at all the mess I made with the glue on the floor, but see, look, this is now tight in here. So this will have to dry for quite a while. I'm going to go get a wet rag and wipe up a lot of this extra glue. And this will just sit for a day. And then I can come back, re-sand where the glue is, scrape that up, clean it a little bit, put our primer on it, and this window will be ready to remount the glass, which will be another nerve-wracking chore. Whew. Okay, I've got everything cleaned up, wiped down. I was careful to go underneath and lay down and look under there and get in the rabbit so I don't have to re-scrape any of that, but I'm done for today. That was actually fun. I would much prefer to be the worker bee. I can't do all this by myself. Well, I could, but I'd be dead long before it ever got finished without people helping this house just could not happen. But I do like just doing the work. That's my favorite part. It's what interests me in the house. And it's been quite a change to go to the nonprofit and have to hire so much work being done and have other people help. But I'm learning, but it is nice to come down here and just have a quiet day. I don't listen to the radio. I don't do anything. I just like to work in silence. I'd be perfectly happy doing this by myself for weeks on end. But for now, I'm packing it in. Thanks for watching. We're the Lee Kentner House in Galveston, Texas. We're a nonprofit. You can go to our website and volunteer, sign up for a contact list for events. We have a lot of fundraisers coming up. Go check the website. It'll tell you when we're open for tours what's coming available. Um, there's a donation button and we have an online store. We need your support to keep this thing going. And thanks for watching this on YouTube. That helps us a lot too. We really appreciate your support and sharing the word with your friends and helping us get new viewers. So we will see you next time here in Galveston, Texas.